Good morning, boys and girls. Today is Friday, May 15th, our very last day of the week. And almost like the end of school. Wow, this is just ending this week. And next week is our last week of school. Can you believe that? Anyways, for today, we're going to continue our Eric Carl um, author study. Miss Bowden has got um, some place where I have to be. So um, I am doing this video the night before again. So today it's really kind of Thursday and it's really rainy, but I do have some place I have to be um, tonight and then tomorrow, which is actually today for Friday for this video. I know it's a little confusing, but um, I get to go into our classroom because I need to get all of your items together. There's gonna be a little special surprise that Miss Martin is gonna call about. And um, Ms. Bowden is getting together all of your supplies from our classroom and your portfolios that I'm going to be putting together today in class. That's why our Zoom meeting is going to be pushed back till the afternoon. And hopefully I can get back home by the afternoon so we can, um, we can have the Zoom meeting. If not, we will just have to push it back to Monday possibly because um, next week's going to be super busy as well for Miss Bowden again and I'm in lots of meetings and um you guys are gonna have a super fun week next week I got some great things planned but um for this video since I have to leave in a little bit I'm just going to be doing um our ELA and our math together because it shouldn't take long to explain it's kind of the same stuff we've been doing all week um anyway our story for the week is a house for hermit crab and here's gonna be your coloring page, a house for hermit crab. And again, I want you to notice all of the really great drawings and details that Eric Carl does. But as you're reading the story, um, pay attention to what's happening because you're gonna have a recall page, which is just checking your comprehension, recalling what you remember throughout the story for those answers. And after you're finished the recall, we're going to kind of go into something called a character set. So it's kind of like that character analysis where you break down those character traits to really um, determine who that character is. So this character sense talks about um, our main character in the story, the hermit crab. And you're going to note some things that it sees, some things that it does, some things that it thinks, and some ways that it feels. So there's going to be three for each category. And um, you can go ahead and um, I'd really like you to, to write most of them, but I will let you draw a picture for one of them. So there's going to be three things that the hermit crab sees throughout the story, three things the hermit crab does throughout the story, three things that the hermit crab thinks throughout the story, and three things the hermit crab feels throughout the story. So think of, go back in your story and think of how um, our hermit crab, like think of things that he sees and does, but then think of, you gotta like put yourself as the hermit crab. Um, and if they don't really tell you in the story and infer it, but think of how he thinks about certain things or what he's thinking about. And also, how does he feel about certain things? So you'll have that to fill out to really kind of dig deep into our hermit crab as a character itself. Then we've got a true, false. Remember, true means that this is a correct statement. False means that it's not correct. So here's just a more recalling information from our story to see if things were true or not. Um, basically, to see if you're paying attention to your story. And then here's a fun ABC order. It deals with all of our months throughout our year because um, all of those months are in your story. So you're gonna have to take all 12 of our months that we have in our year and put them in ABC order. Remember, if some of them have the same beginning letter like January, June, and July, you go to the second letter and start with the ABC order again from there. But what about June and July? The J and the U are the same, so then you go to the third letter to put them in order. And it gives you the alphabet on there to help you look, pay attention to the alphabet. So you have to keep seeing it in your head over and over again to know what letter comes before the other one. Next is gonna be your writing. We're gonna be sequencing the story. And when we sequence, there's lots of events that happen. So I really want you to think about the 
big ideas. If this didn't happen in the story, then um, the story wouldn't make sense. Because once you write this, if you were to go back and reread it, you would um, be able to basically retell the story to where I wouldn't have to read the book. I would know everything that kind of happened. So this is only gonna be a brainstorming page. You're not gonna have extra writing paper because if we had extra writing paper, Miss Bowden would make you do an intro and a conclusion. So if you wanna do that on paper on your own, I would highly recommend it. But here you're just gonna fill out what happened first, next, then after that, and finally, the five big topics um, that the story definitely needs in order to tell the story. But what I would recommend is after you finish that, maybe get another sheet of paper and write the be an intro sentence. Let me tell you what happens in the book, A House for Hermit Crab, and then write first, next, then after that, finally, and you know, your sentences. And then as a concluding sentence, you know, you can write, um, these were the main events that happened in a house for hermit crab, or I hope you enjoyed um, my summary of a house for hermit crab. So think of something like that after. That's a good little challenge to help you think of an intro and conclusion you can use to write for your for your writing for today. And then last, we've got the hermit crab craft I'm gonna give you that you guys can do. So the crab comes white, but again, you can print them out, you can color it, and what you're gonna learn is I'm gonna give you facts about hermit crabs for you to learn, and you're gonna see all the different shells on hermit crabs and how they're colorful. So if you'd want, I'd really say decorate the, the shell of the hermit crab, because I think it would be great to see all the beautiful colors that they have, and especially like when you've been to the beach, if you guys have been to the beach, and you know those beach shops, they sell hermit crabs, and you can buy really cool shells for them, and a lot of them are painted, amazing like designs and cool patterns and colors, so that'd be pretty cool to go ahead and um, do yours that way. Okay, our next is phonics. What sounds have we been working on this week? Oi, very good. And what letters make up oi? O-I and O-Y, yes, exactly. So we're not gonna have any worksheets today. We're gonna have comprehension stories today. So you've got two of them. You've got O-Y and O-I. So what I want you to do is for the O-I one, I want you to go through and crayon and circle all of the words with O-I that say oi. For the OI one, circle all the OI words that say OI in crayon. And then you have some questions for each story you need to answer. Answer the questions in complete sentences. And when you go to answer it, underline your answer in the story and put that number one next to it for wherever that answer is to know that that's where I got my answer and that's the answer for question number one and write your answer in a complete sentence. Same thing for number two, underline it and put a number two there. Number three, underline it, put a number three there, okay? Same thing that we do in class. Go ahead and underline your answers in the story and then write your answers in complete sentences underneath it. Okay, now for math, I'm gonna give you your day nine and day 10. I think you had day nine yesterday, so day 10 should be today. Um, and then your problem set and your homework pages are gonna look the exact same as last week. This is just now finishing up all of our adding of two digit numbers. So I taught you multiple strategies. So today you just pick and choose the strategy that works best for you. So I'm gonna do the very first problem with you guys and um, you get to decide whatever you um, want to do for the problem set. And if you wanna do the homework pages of extra practice, go for it. So we've got 48 plus 21. So the different ways you can draw it out, you can make it 10, you can do the number bond way, you can do old school vertical up and down way. It really is up to you. It is whatever is easiest for you. So Ms. Bowden, I'm gonna go ahead, 48 plus 21, I'm gonna do up and down for this one, 48 plus 21. And when I do it, remember, draw your line and line up all your tens and your ones. I'm lining up my tens and my ones, 48 plus 21. Now remember, I start on this side, on the side with all the ones, because we work backwards, the side furthest away from the plus sign. 
So I'm gonna add up these ones. Eight ones plus one one gives me nine. Very good, I've got nine ones. So I can just put that number nine there. Now I've got four tens plus two tens and that gives me six tens. So my answer is 69. And this is showing us our work right here, going up and down. Okay, I'm gonna do the next one, 48 plus 22. I'm gonna do that one up and down as well, because that's just the quickest strategy for Miss Bowden. Start on the one side, eight plus two gives me eight, nine, 10, gives me 10. So can I put 10 down here? Nope, I can only put the zero because there's zero ones and 10 and I have to put the one 10 in the tens column. So one plus four is five, plus two more is six, seven. So my answer is 70. Okay, if you are not comfortable with this old school way, you can do the number bond way. You can um, draw it out. That's always the easiest. You can break it apart and make a 10. It is up to you. There's so many strategies. I'm not gonna go over all those strategies again because they were in my past videos you guys can do. This is like the fifth day we're doing it now and I think you guys kind of know which way works best for you. So I want you to go ahead and solve these problems whatever way works best for you. And I love to see pictures of your problems being solved too and the strategies that you like the best. So um, I hope you enjoy your lesson for today and you have a great weekend. I um, hope you get your mail soon because they're all in the mail now. And I would love to see your pictures of all your special little prizes, like little surprises that you got. And um, I'd love to hear how you like it. And um, definitely... Um, send me lots of pictures and videos over the weekend of, of your mail if you've gotten your mail, if you get your mail. And Miss Bowden will be back with you guys hopefully in the afternoon for our Zoom meeting. Hopefully I can get finished with a lot of the things done in my classroom tomorrow. And while I'm in the classroom, I'll be sure to send you guys a video um, before I pack everything up and kind of start taking some things down to get together for you guys. So um, look forward to that video for tomorrow. Bye guys, have a beautiful weekend, great day, and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye.